Hello, and welcome to Camel Finance. I'm your boy Camel, and we had FOMC minutes yesterday. And the question is, why are FOMC minutes important? They are often heavily revised after the Fed gauges the response from Wall Street to fine-tune its message, and investors are hoping to read the Fed is soon going to back off its tightening plans. Don't hold your breath on that, says the Bond King. Conversely, we have the Fed's Bostick telling us that they're likely going to pause interest rate hikes in September. Um, so you've got the Fed sort of priming to stop the rate hikes in September. You've got a lot of the market participants believing that they're not going to back off any time soon. Believing their narrative that they are going to continue to hike rates until inflation is back at 2%. So you've got quite the divide at the moment in market participants. I, of course, am in the camp that thinks that they're going to do one or two more token raises and then and then pivot. And they're sort of already priming for this. They're telling us that they, they're going to possibly stop in September. I would not be surprised if it was before September, as I've said dozens and dozens of times on this channel. I think the problem with believing that they're not going to stop hiking rates anytime soon is that this discounts the fact the Fed wants inflation. The Fed does, of course, want inflation because there's no other way it can service its debt and also because it needs to impoverish people to get them to accept CBDCs. So, I mean, we'll see. We'll see, right? Nobody really knows at the end of the day. This is a this is a cartel organization, the Fed, that is, is completely dominating markets and we live in absolute la-la land in terms of investing. So there's not much we can do apart from sit back and enjoy the show. But the lesson learned over the past 14 years is whenever you get significant drawdowns, there is always a bailout. So is this the first time we're not going to have one? Of course not. It's just, this is a matter of when, not if. It's definitely coming. It's almost certainly coming before November. Um, like I said, they're priming for September maybe, but I think it'll be before then. But they've got to do it before November because of the because of the elections, and that's the oldest trick in the book, and they literally do this every time. They wreck the stock market on purpose, then pump it back up right in time for the election so they can say ha look look what we did we sorted it we sorted out the problem so i'm sure they're going to continue to do the exact same thing again just a friendly reminder this is a great day to take any bitcoin you've got off of exchanges you know put it into cold storage keep all your recovery seeds away from prying eyes and ensure that you are immune from exchange hacks or exchange bankruptcies liquidation so on and so forth so if you've got a bunch of Bitcoin or crypto on exchanges, take it off. The mayor of Miami has confirmed he's still taking his salary in Bitcoin. So if you don't need your salary immediately, why wouldn't you? I mean, in life, you have two choices. Do you want to use fiat currency, which is mathematically guaranteed to decrease purchasing power over time? Or do you want to use Bitcoin, which is mathematically guaranteed to increase purchasing power over time? It's your choice. If you've watched this channel before, you'll know my attitude towards Bitcoin and it, the narrative of it using too much energy. Um, I just have utter disregard for this. Um, I have no time for it. And it may surprise you that Bitcoin mining is the fastest, most reliable way to slow down the, the climate impact. Um, and if this does surprise you, it's because there's been an ESG gaslighting campaign against Bitcoin. So if you don't agree with this or you think that you think this is wrong, go and do some research. But I'll just give you the cliff notes really quickly. Using Bitcoin mining to combust leaking methane sources can eliminate 5.32% of all global emissions by 2045, which represents 23% of all global methane emissions, more than half of the UN EP's target reduction of methane of 45% by 2045. In addition, Bitcoin mining has the potential to avoid nearly 0.15% of warming by 2045. This excludes other uses of Bitcoin, such as facilitating the renewable build out of the grid and is based purely on its ability to reduce leaking methane emissions. And finally, why this is so important is because Bitcoin mining is currently the only way of reducing methane emission, which is both technologically feasible and which does not require significant behavior change in order to work. So whilst these elites want you to stop eating meat and blame it on cows and a bunch of other nonsense, okay? Like I said, if you don't know what I'm talking about, go and do some research and if you know, you know. But the key point I'm trying to make here is the overhead for Bitcoin mining, the biggest overhead after technology and cooling, is energy. Bitcoin mining incentivizes clean, renewable and free energy. Of course it does, because electricity is a massive overhead. And of course people will say, well, why should we use any electricity at all? I mean, isn't it just all wasted energy? It's not, because it's the only secure database on the planet. And how much electricity does your banking industry use? 
okay, to warm all those offices so people can just constantly inflate you into poverty and never give you any interest in your saving account. I mean, this whole argument is stupid. And if you haven't come to that conclusion, then please just go and do some research. So looking at the Mayer multiple, the price is looking exactly the same as how it did in the March 2020 capitulation for the old outbreak. And that represented an incredible buying opportunity for anyone that was around then. And um, apparently that's exactly where we are today. So is it time to start a DCA? If not, buy the dip. I, I think it probably is, but not financial advice, of course. You do you. The S&P futures are flat, slightly green. Um, if you've been watching the channel and the trading portion of the videos, you'll know that I've been lining up this trade for a little while and it hasn't closed above this line, so we're not in. But if we can get a daily close today above this line, then that will be an entry with a stop down here. Um, if it can't produce today, then I probably won't take a position on Friday because as I'm always saying, I'm not looking to take on any weekend risk. I'll just wait until Monday. I've also had this silver position open, so starting to look a little weak, to be honest. It's not, not looking too great, but, you know, just got to hold on. Let the stops do the worrying. There's no point doing any doing any worrying myself or manipulating the position, so on and so forth. Gold is back inside of here. Is it going to come in for a back test of this line? Quite possibly. We will see. Um, for now, though, anytime it's inside this wedge, I'm happy with it. Not too worried about that. Bitcoin is kind of still sideways, isn't it? Very boring. Bitcoin, when it compresses this much, it doesn't usually, you know, a big move is going to come here. The question is in which direction. But we've got this, this is just very roughly drawn. We've got this compression forming. So, I mean, maybe it just continues to chop sideways. I, I, maybe we do get one of these 60-day consolidation cycles. I'm not saying it has to follow the shape of this fractal, but just in terms of the time. Maybe it just goes net sideways up until around the 7th of July. But usually when the volatility like this squeezes, it means that a big move is going to come. So up or down, nobody really knows. We will see. But I'll continue to update as and when. And in terms of trading positions, not really interested in this until we can convincingly close outside of this blue blue downward sloping trend line. The dollar is still looking weak, but I do think if we're being honest, this is most likely got, got to have another bounce in it to make a lower high. Like, I don't know what would catalyze short of the Fed pivoting tomorrow, which would, of course, catalyze this dropping like a stone. Um, I do think this has to have some level of bounce and then does it double top higher high or preferably a lower high a lower high would be really nice we can only make it up here and roll over then we would break this parabola break this trend line and uh, we should be we should be able to ignite some sort of serious risk on rally for a while um, the euro is just sort of into resistance we'll see I guess um, but I do think realistically the dollar's got to have some some level of bounce before before it can truly break down. So we'll continue to monitor that. Ten year yield, it's coming off, continues to come off. So how far down does it go? I'm not really sure, but we'll keep an eye on that as well. For now, the stars are seemingly aligning. Can we get a bounce out of the equity markets? Quite possibly. Um, we will see, I guess. But if you found value here today. I'd appreciate it if you could subscribe to the channel. If you want to continue to watch me deal with these markets as a swing trader, then make sure you're subscribed and turn the notifications on. Follow me on Twitter. And until next time, take care. Look after yourself. All the best. Cheers. Bye.